Hey, what's good, everybody? This is your country cousin, Pete McCarvey, a.k.a. Peter Mack. And welcome back to a new season of The Great Unknowns. Um, sorry about an uh, unexpected uh, season ending that I had, but my work schedule for the Navy got got switched up. I got put on a night shift, which was crazy, like two week, two days, one week, five days next week. But while I was doing it, I'm glad, because it got me to thinking, it's like, you know what? For The Great Unknowns, I don't just know great unknown comedians. I actually know a lot of great unknown artists, uh, musicians, people that aspire to be a politicians, actors, filmmakers. And um, so I said, you know what? I'm not just going to do comedians. I'm going to do some of everybody. And this first person I got for this new season, for this first episode of the new season, is somebody I, I called him up and I asked. Now, me and this guy go back. I ain't going to say we go back to the sandbox, but we probably go, we go back to like the monkey bars. You know, we go, we, we go back. Uh, we we met each other on the uh, on the on the gridiron out there at West Elementary. You know, shout out to them two thousand mm. West Raiders, baby. Eleven, twelve. All right. Tad Bo 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 Champions of Moss Point, Mississippi. You know how it go. Everybody yes, know sir. the real. Yes, sir. Uh, my man. Uh, well, I know him as a native of Hawaii. I don't know if that's where he was born. That we'll get into because he's a military brat. Um, not really emphasis on the brat. The man ain't never been bratter than me. Um, hell of an artist. Um, also has his own clothing line, Cupidero's fire ass shit. Y'all need to chop with him. He actually got it on right now. Um, and, sure. and, and, and something else you don't know about this brother. He actually was when Mississippi decided to change their state flag. He was one of his design was one of the finalists in that competition. So man, y'all get up for my boy. I know him as Q Mob, but his his government name is Quinn Mobley, or I like to call him Hawaii. What's up, big dog? <laughs> What's going on, bro? What's going on? Thank you for having me on. Shit, no, we go. How you been, man? Man, been good, man. Just relaxing, chilling, doing art. You know what I mean? Making yeah, clothes, still, as you see. Uh, yeah. Yo, yeah, um, yo, yeah, so you yeah, you still so you do all that by but your day job. Tell them what tell the people where you work at. And I can't even believe this. That this is where you work. <laughs> My day job, I'm basically an inventory specialist as a wall at Walgreens. Yeah, my day job. Yeah, yeah. I, I know how they feel about Walgreens. I used to be a, yeah. I used to be a financial distribution officer for them, i.e., a cash okay. here. So I already get it, man. But like, hey, yeah. you you up there? You like a specialist, and so that means you super toy role, boy. I couldn't break past seven twenty five. Mm, man, so, man, no. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, bro. I started there. I started there. You know, first place that hired me out of college. So. Oh shit, but they were they weren't the first place, but they were the last place. And as you see, I ended up having to join the Navy. So that's tell you like, yeah. <laughs> man, all right. All right. All right. No. So man, what's been going on with you, bro? Oh man, I'm just I'm still in the Navy, man. I got like one year left, bro. They can have this, man. I can't, I can't, yeah. I can't do it. I'm tired, boss. I can't. I never yeah. to be honest with you, I never planned on staying in as long as just situations happen, but I mean, I'm still pushing. I'm still getting on stage. Left like a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you saw it online. I actually opened up for Howard Davis, man. So yeah, yeah. I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it, bro. Hey, bro. That's big. Hey, that dude, a real East Side Detroit nigga for real. Like, yeah. Yeah, he came in the green room. He's like, who does not like, yeah, y'all some ghetto ass niggas here. He cool <laughs> though. I remember, uh, last show I did with him, I did good. And I walked by and said, hey, Lenise, that's some good shit. I was like, oh, appreciate it. So mm -hmm. I'm just still doing okay. me, still trying to find my lane, trying to, I ain't trying to, you know how black men, I'm trying to be like you when I grow up, man. You know, you out here. Man, I'm making, just making, making these, it, man. Breaking Day these by great day, making pieces. it. Man. Got your own man. clothing line and all that. So. Yeah, Cupid arrows, you know, Cupid arrows, my clothing yeah, line. Well, I, it's been I, a, I, so how you come about, hmm? what made you decide to jump into that arena of designing clothes, bro? Um, I would say started back, like, when I was little. My mom used to have me, uh, when every time in like the military, my dad was in the Air Force, you know, every time my mom, we go somewhere and she had like somebody she worked with move away, she'll always have me like get, she'll buy a t-shirt and have me draw on it for them. And it'd be like different things that they remember about being in Hawaii or whatever location we were at. So started from there, um, fast forward, I was always into fashion. Uh, my mom, my sister, like heavy influence on fashion. They always like told me to try to be different. Don't be like somebody else. So 
that was that's the main focus of how I got into fashion. But I'll say like 2016, I was sitting down drawing some drawing something for our close friend, you know, from the Raiders, yeah. Skylar Burks. And tank, big tank. I, big tank. So I came up with the logo, drawing something for him. So at the time, my girlfriend was my wife now, Lanisha. Yeah. Um, and my homeboy does 10, you know, creative genius. You need to get him oh, on the show. I, next. I need to get him too. You yeah. need to get him on the show. Yeah, creative I'm genius. We were talking and we were chapping, talking up. And I was like, man, this would be dope as a, you know, a logo for something. And I was like, maybe a clothing line. So instead of me spelling Cupid like how it is, I was like, I'm gonna put a Q on this and my name is Quinn. And yeah. then Arrows is this the Greek version of Cupid. And Cupid is just the uh, Roman guy. So basically, I just made it his first name, his last name. I feel it, I feel it. So you said drawing, as we all know, like I've always tell everybody, my boy here with that pen. When did you like first, because you probably been drawing, scribbling that, but when did you first like really take art serious, bro? Uh, Third and fourth grade. I was in an art competition in Hawaii and I had did a painting of this elephant in the woods. It was called Whisper in the Wind. And uh, it won the competition in the school. So after it won the competition in school, it moved on. To this day, I don't know where that painting at. Because it came over here to the mainland and I don't know where it's at. But Man. it was supposed to, it was what it did good there, but that's when it started. I was like fourth grade. Yeah, I feel you on that because bro, it's two pieces that you made for me that I can't find. Like, one of them was my birthday card you made for me. Like, I think it was six, oh, was it fifth, six, sixth, seventh grade, when y'all had that surprise party for me and you had made that card was the late, great Steve McNair trucking that But Bro, I held on that thing for like bro. five or six years because I was like, yo, That's this crazy. is dope. I forgot all about that, bro. That's crazy. Bro, that, was, hey, that was a fire ass card. I had that. And it was one you made of me on stage with my A5A. Eight eight. I lost that in transition moving from California to Georgia, man, because I know for a fact I put that in a certain bag I had because I remember my uh, my ex at the time, she helped me pack that away because I put like mm -hmm. a couple months before I put that in my um in my trunk. And she's like, why are you doing mm -hmm. I said, no, nah, my boy made this for me. This got some sentimental value. I can't lose it. I remember going and I couldn't find it. I think that bitch probably like uh, got me while I was sleeping. <laughs> so, and, tore, and, and tore it up, huh? She probably Everything. did, man, but I held a boy. I'm talking about, you talking about when I got the Georgia unpack my car, you talking about crying. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, like, what was, like, when you first started? Because, like, everybody has, like, every artist, I think, has a certain thing they like to draw at first. What was, like, mm -hmm. your main, like, thing or thing that you kind of, like, started and you went with until you branched off into other avenues? Uh, Cartoons. Cartoons are, like, a heavy influence in my life. You know how some kids like they have a whole schedule for Saturday. I'm yeah. one of those kids like get my cereal, get my cartoons. Don't talk to me till like twelve o'clock, and I go outside and play all day. But cartoons, that's why I say cartoons. Really, I'll say like cartoons, Power Rangers, stuff like that. Really impact. So like it was colors, it was how they move, it was just the animation just grabbed into it's like grabbed me. It's like okay sit down and you can watch it. And like cartoons nowadays are different, but like cartoons back then, they had messages, they had um, ways of grabbing my attention to where I was like, man, I want to recreate this. Yeah. Also with cartoons, bro, I'm going back watching some cartoons we watched back in the day. They slid some shit in now that I'm watching, like, whoa. Man. All right. Like, whoa, All how right. y'all get that past us? Like, it was, right. I'm gonna tell you one particular, Rocco's Morning Life. Rocco and Heffa were going, it does a lot of stuff, but this one, I was just like, oh my God, Rocco and Heffa were going to a, a, a motel and they mm -hmm. wanted to rent the room and the, the man in the front, they're like, no, we only rent about an hour and the bell thing, so oh, one just came available. I'm like. I'm like well, you'd be surprised. Man. You'd be surprised, like uh, Rugrats. If you ever go back and watch Rugrats, oh, the grandpa, the grandpa had a couple porn magazines in his hand no, that the kids couldn't see. When you try to invite Morgano, he said, Space Vixen. He said, oh, that, that, that's when y'all go yep. to sleep. I'm like, mm -hmm. but no, the that. one that got me was when uh, Tommy discovered being new, and they and then Phil and Leo got new. He said, Phil, he's like, uh, Leo, uh, we we need to talk. What is that? I'm like, you're right. Yeah. That was, 
But yeah. you said it's Saturdays. Yeah, we yeah, said yeah, on yeah. Saturdays. That was your schedule. So when we played Little League football, how did you how did you have to get over that? Because, you know, some of them days, we had to be out there at 8 in the morning, dog. See, by the time I moved to Mississippi, like, I was in a different space. You know what I'm saying? And I got used to playing football on Saturday. So being around y'all was different from, like, Hawaii. Like, Hawaii had a schedule to where I watch cartoons and I go ride my BMX bike with my friends or go play street hockey. Coming to Mississippi, it's like, bro, we in the streets. So we either going to, like, no right. We either going to go walk around town, go to the candy lady. We got football in the morning. So what we doing after? We playing. You know what I'm saying? So playing pick up and run it. So that it changed. So like now my art from then to now is either it's carts. My art is big on cartoons. So I still do cartoons. But it's like it's either modern day or it's a mix of what I grew up with. Okay. So like this, like the paint, like the painting behind me right now. That's yeah. like when I first started painting. That's like the first painting I did when I started painting. And that's basically called uh, doing hood rat stuff with my hood rat friends. <laughs> so that's like, <laughs> like literally like, that's like, it's a mix of like stuff I grew up with. I was born in Japan. So I try to incorporate like stuff that's Japanese culture or like I grew up a little bit in G Germany. So I like, I might throw a Germany, a German flag in there, but most stuff is, either between Hawaii or Mississippi. Right. I incorporated my art. So we know you spend like from like 12 to like now in Mississippi, but out of other places you spend, which one would you say shaped who you are the most? Between Germany, Japan, and Hawaii, which one would you say um, uh, cultivate you, made you who you are? Um, I'll say Hawaii and Mississippi. Yeah. Hawaii yeah, and Mississippi. That's how you got your nickname like, for me. Yeah, yeah, my first one. You hated that, man. I kept calling you, and I think until you started playing football night, Grace said, bro, stop calling me that. I'm like, oh, yeah, he hit the gym now. Yeah, that's cool. That's true, mom. <laughs> I can call him that. So, I mean, it's it's still a few people still call me. You call me that. Chop still call me that every now and then. Tank every now and then. He'll joke around and call me. But most people, you know, they just call me Quinn, Quinn Mob, Mob. So I got used to it. So, you know. Yo, that was Coach yeah. Ben. Coach Ben was just giving everybody names, boy. He gave you Man, that. All he right. gave Javon Wilsh blue shirt. I was like, blue shirt? Like, all right. He just, I'm right. like, blue shirt. It was like, like, where you come from? I knew where he got blue shirt from because, like, he used to wear mm -hmm. blue shirt to practice. And you were right. white. I'm like, that man ain't no white. And everybody's like, his dad was in the Air Force. He came from white. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I was yeah. just a little peep. You know what I'm saying? I just, mm -hmm. that man right there. I, I still can't get over the day. That man came straight to me and said, Pete, you being a pussy right now. <laughs> man, it threw me off. Like, man, I got in the car. My daddy like, don't be mad. I said, no, nah, I ain't mad. I said, but can he say that to me? I'm 12. I mean, I ain't right. mad if that's how he feel. I'm like, can he? I'm a child. Can he say that? Right. Because he threw I me mean, hey, That's tough football, though. That's like, like it. That made us to go undefeated, and people still mad about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they made y'all go undefeated. I deal with them. Like, I ain't gonna say. I was just. I mean, what did I do? I be mean, I was just on the team. I mean, you 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 blocked because I was because I was fat. That's what it was. I was fat at the time, so that's on reason. I mean, your weight had to. Hey, you use your weight. You put it on people. I mean, so shit. Hey, don't think it ain't nothing here. You, you knocked my ass over a few times, so shit. Man, that's because I was fat. I mean, I wasn't really fat. I was just chubby at the time when I came here. Because I mean. Like I said, I was I was outside in Hawaii, but like compared to Mississippi, like y'all were really outside. And I was like, okay, they outside every day. We go outside. It's like, hey, we gotta wait till everybody go outside and see what they're gonna do. You know, bro, that's how that's how we got down, bro. That's why a lot of us play football, which is funny because you saw a lot of us play football in Pee Wee and junior high, but in high school, it's like, why that nigga stop playing? Cause he, mm -hmm. cause one, I never get one teammate out. I could not understand for life for me why he didn't play. That T wheel, I was like, why did you hang it up, bro? I don't know. I never asked T wheel that. I never did. He was, like, he, he was, he was cold at running back. Cause like we used to run that three back set. It was him, mm -hmm. Tank, and did big want to be Mike outside outside uh Jeremy Richardson. Man, I used to hate yep. having to go against that that motherfucking practice. Told me like you gotta show him you tough. I didn't volunteer for this. <laughs> Not right. me, Jerry Rich. I didn't volunteer. 
I remember that when we had to do Oklahoma drill with him and Michael Atwood. Boy, yeah, I used to hate that. I him, Michael Atwood, that. Kevin Towner, and they put me as a defensive dummy against him. I'm like, why? Right. Why? I mean, why? I was it, like, I'm looking at Coach Perry and Coach Towner. Like, what are y'all trying to prove? Hey, they try to prove that we be tough. I mean, well, it's different times now. That must be tough enough. They gave me the most valuable play. I'm like, where? They were like, they like your heart, dog. I mean, I'm like, yeah, well, y'all stomped everything. You had heart, bro. You had well, they heart, stomped bro. everything else out of my ass. Shit, I mean, that's all it was up. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, man, up. like, I, I remember it was some things I wanted to quit, and I see you out there. I was like, damn, I can't quit. He's still gone. Because my daddy wouldn't let me. You know how many cousins out there had to take, and you out, you know how my daddy would. So, yeah. So, boy, it was like, yeah. I ain't worried. That's what I said. I'm going to worry about Coach Ben screaming at me, bro. It's like, do you know what I go home to every day? And, this, yeah. and you can't put your hands on me. You can. You're right. That was, it, see, it was new to me, though. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, football was new. My parents never thought I was going to play football. They already knew I was going to do art. They thought I was probably going to play hockey or probably or play, uh, be on a BMX bike or skateboard or something like that. They never thought I was going to be. A football player or play football. Well, so. we didn't have all the other shit that you said in Mississippi. So it was football. So did you tell them you wanted to do that? Because, you know, I wasn't going to West. I just played for y'all because that was the neighborhood team. I was going to Escatabo. Mm-hmm. So was it you heard tanking them at school talking about you like, hey, that sounds like it's fun. I want to do it. No, what happened was Tank and the Carlos Dorsey convinced me to play. Yeah. And everything's everything is written in stone now. You know what I'm saying? I ain't stopped playing. Well, I did stop playing in junior high, but I started playing back in ninth grade. But those two are the ones that convinced me to play football. And you in high school, you had moved to what it was linebacker and running back. Oh they they moved me to running back. No, not running back. They moved me, okay, in ninth grade, well, eighth grade in the spring, going to ninth grade, they put me at fullback. But I couldn't remember what position. I played in that spring. So the first thing I thought about was linebacker. So I was stuck at linebacker in ninth grade to my whole high school career. And then when I got to college and we were running back. Yeah, I saw that. So I was, when you went to Mississippi College, they, they, they did you a scholarship or did you walk on? Uh, I went to Hines first. And um, my homeboy, me and uh, Jarius Hawkins, we walked on at Hines and we earned our scholarships. I earned my scholarship basically the week before signing day. And okay. he got his like the same same time frame as me. And after that, I went to Mississippi College. All right. And walked on. Yeah, because I was like running back. Where did that that come from? Um yeah. so so what was what was it like for you at Mississippi College? You major in art there or what 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 is what's what, what, uh I majored in graphic design. Okay. So yeah, so nobody had illustration. I was gonna go to art school out of high school, but it's too expensive. Like crazy expensive. I was gonna go with my um, my homeboy Pooh, you know, Jarvis Tucker. We were gonna go to art school. He was gonna go to fashion. I was gonna go to illustration, but but it was too expensive for both of us. So I was like, man, I'm gonna go walk on and play football somewhere. I know I can. I, I know I can get make somebody a team. So when I went to Mississippi College, I was like, okay, graphic design is probably the closest that I can do because nobody has illustration in Mississippi. And then like I didn't even think about looking outside of Mississippi. So I was like, okay, let me do graphic design. I learned, you know, it, it helps. You know, it helps me a lot now since like, especially since recently my recent, my most recent project I did was with Make a Wish Foundation. Oh, and um uh, And um, 2K, 2K Foundation. And we uh, did a court for a little boy named uh, Isaiah out in Oakland, California. And it's basically his, he, he won a, a basketball court in his backyard so he could teach his sisters how to play basketball. You know what I'm saying? It's like was home. So I was like geek to do it. It's a it's tight, tight design, crazy design I did for him. Bro, I probably might have yeah. saw your thing. I didn't know it was in Oakland because I just went to Oakland back in August. And I think mm-hmm. I might have saw your design. I'm like, that court looked dope as hell. So that was yeah. so yeah, but um so like when did you get in the paint? Cause like I knew you drew you drew and everything, but then I was like, oh, he paint now. So in college, I uh, took up oil painting. I hated it. And I was like, man, I'm not gonna paint. Painting not for me. But I took up, I went to go see, um, I was trying to take up being a, um, a tattoo artist. I went to Atlanta, met a guy named Maya Bailey, big out there in the art scene in Atlanta. Uh, owns a city, owns a uh, tattoo shop called City Inc. 
and he's yeah. the owner, him and a dude named Tupi uh, Carter. So I was like, okay, let me go talk to him. Chopped it up with him, cool guy. You know, gave me a lot of uh, information and stuff like I needed to know. Gave me some advice and he told me, which made my eyes open up to him. He's like, he was like, your art can go to the next level, basically, if you start painting. You know what I'm saying? Everything's cool in your drawing book, but it's like, if you want collectors and buyers, painting is where it's at. Yeah. And Speaking he's like, oh, man, I'm going to cut you off. You good. I was going to say, he's like, that's where it's at. And he's like, that's what you need to do. Yeah. Speaking of drawing book, hey, man, that iconic black drawing book you got, tell me you ain't misplaced. Tell me you got that locked away somewhere. Or did it, or did Katrina, or you just said it just got lost over the time? Oh, you talking about my first job, my purple one? I still got it. Yeah, still got I was it. about to say, boy, still hey, got it. Still if, got if, it. When we in junior high, I remember, I think you remember you used to have that, like, because for those y'all don't know, when we played football, our team was so dope. We had other people in other cities, because this is before Pee Wee started going city to city. When we was growing up, they didn't go city to city, because every school had a team, so it was like a league within that, but we still had that. We had other people from other towns want our heads, and we go into other towns, and we crack their heads and come back. So right. every trip we was on, my man had this purple drawing book. Like, if he was going to get on the bus or the van or wherever we took, one of them be like, Hawaii, where you, where you book? Oh, shit, this is my dad car. Like, yeah, bro, like, we was like, because now everybody had their own little thing they did. Michael Atwood, he don't want to talk to nobody. Mm -hmm. uh, James McCarty, he he out there, he janking my ass. Me, I'm talking big cash money shit to everybody, because that's what I did. And Quinn in his book drawing. Right. That's what everybody did. So if we, if we got on the bus, it, it's a ritual. So we, we like, what you put? Like, oh, snap. And then we just get on there and everybody leave him alone. But hit my little itty bitty. I know, what you drawing, bro? Yeah. <laughs> and he'd be like, I'm drawing this. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. What did, and he'd say, I'm like, oh, okay. You won't be left alone. Yeah, that's when I was, you know, in my shell about not sharing my art. And that's another thing I learned going to college. I met this, uh, my last year in college before I graduated, I met this guy, uh, I think his name was Carlos, and he was uh, becoming the new head of the graphic design department. And he was like, why do you don't post your art or share it on social media? I was like, man, one, probably somebody gonna steal my art, you know what I'm saying? But he was like, nah, you need to share this with the world, you know, stop, stop holding it in. So that's when I really started sharing my artwork on social media or just sharing in public. Like, you know, me and you, I used to share it with you when I got comfortable. So you yeah. seen like my drawing book, you seen like the pages and everything like that, but like everybody else, if I, you know, I just, that was my, that was my safe space. You know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. when I was younger, I was like that, when I was like first starting out posting, I will always put like the hashtag, my escape from reality. Cause that's what my drawing book was, my escape from reality. But yeah, but no, like I said, your shit is dope. Like this is one picture you did of me. Like when I was in the name, my first tour in San Diego, and you, when I had my cover off my arm, card, like, yo, can I do this? Can I like, do something with it? I said, yo. So I remember I did that, and I was like, oh, snap, my boy made one um, that inspired by me. They're like, hey, yo, they're like, yo, boy, fire, man. I'm like, hey. I said, my boy nice with them. My boy nice with the pen and the, yeah. and the ink. Boy, I like that pen, and the ink, and the, and the uh, coloring. I said, my boy don't play. So speaking yeah. of which, I know you said cartoons. Bro, I ain't going to lie. I thought by now you would have had, like, one, two, three cartoons on Cartoon Network or some shit. So is that your Man. goal like to make cartoons or not no more? My goal has changed so many times to where I want to do it all. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I want to be stuck in one box. I have stories that some people have read. I just haven't actually finished my characters for it. I have, you know, ideas for my clothing line. I have a backup clothing line idea I want to do. So there's so many ideas I want to do. It's just, I got to put it out there. So like starting up like Cupid. Cupid is like the first character I actually continue drawing. Most characters I do is like one time and that's it. But now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to draw characters over and over again. So I might well get used to it. So I have a story I'm probably going to try to put out in the next two years. Uh, Cupid, you want to see more characters from the Cupid line. That's gonna be a story in, into itself, and then that's hey, you never know if it's up from there. I know where you speaking of up, like where's it up from here with your clothing? Like you got like 
uh, vendors that's going after you trying to get in some shops or something like that, or you just want to keep right. it like uh, grassroots for right now. Right now, I'm going to stay on, you know, the web right now. I ain't going to do, I ain't going to venture out into brick and mortar just yet. I'm going to start doing more pop-ups um, probably this coming up year. Not probably. I am going to do more pop-ups this okay. coming up year. Uh, Atlanta, I just did my second solo show at uh, Offbeat in Jackson. Uh, it's a cool record store owned by DJ Young Venom. He uh, blessed me to uh, have the opportunity to do my second solo show there. It's yeah. still there right now to the end of the month. I have a, a cute couple pieces up there. If anybody want to go up there to Jackson and check it out. Um, I plan on doing another art show, uh, probably here on the coast. And I'm probably going to try to look up a space in Atlanta to do one too. So that one you did right there on Main Street in Moss Point a couple years ago, because when I came off leave and I called it, mm -hmm. that wasn't a solo show that you had? I thought that, that was a that, solo show. Yeah, that was, that was my first solo show. Yeah, ever. that was dope, so that, that was my first, appreciate that. Appreciate that. That was my first one. Uh, Larry Fairley, one of my good friends, he had a space, and he let me do my first solo show there. Um, it was a great turnout. Love doing that one. I'll say you came and saw it. You were like, hey, that's crazy. How long you came along from that? Yeah, book. bro, because I was so, like, yeah. damn. I said, I remember, I said, it all, like, like how uh, Royce Five Nine said, it all started with a starter coat. I'm like, it all started with a, with a uh, purple book, boy. Right. And it's book. crazy. Now that I think about it, bro, that might be the reason in most of my pieces. I incorporate purple. I ain't even think about that like that. Yeah, you got a lot of my it, pieces. It all right, too. <laughs> right, right. I incorporate purple a lot in my work, so that might be the reason. Is that your favorite color or no? No, it's not. My favorite color is like my favorite two colors are orange and blue. So it's like it's kind of it's kind of weird that I always incorporate purple and pink too. So okay. I don't even know why. Orange and blue. That's weird. I would have thought like it was either black and silver or orange and, and green since yeah. you're since you a Raiders and Raiders yeah. fan and a, and again. Nah. See, I would say back in the day when I was younger, because I was I hated doing color. Like I hated any kind of color in art. Really? If you look at my if you you look at my old artwork to now, like I didn't start using color in my artwork until maybe my junior year in college. That's crazy. I, I know, I hated color. Like, like, like my mom. From now. Yeah, I know, that's, a, that's the thing. Yeah. Like I didn't start, I got introduced to an illustration class in college and he was like, the, co the, the teacher or the instructor at the time was like, hey, yeah, I need to get some markers and all this stuff. You had to buy all your supplies. But like when people say art is art, why your price is so high? Like art is expensive, it is not cheap. Like, so he had, you know, I'm a college student. So I'm like, man, I'm broke. How am I going to buy some, 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 you know, markers, paint and all this stuff? Man, luckily my mama went to Hobby Lobby and got it all on sale. So thanks my mom. Love you. You know, so, <laughs> so I got that. I got the paint. So I was like, the paint brushes, the marker. I was like, man, I'm, I'm loving it. Like, I'm loving this. Like, okay, I like this color. You know, I'm doing this color. So like, now it's a session. Like I love using color okay. in my art. Yeah. yeah I never noticed that. Like, yeah. I never noticed you didn't use color like that, but now like I have mentioned the Raiders and you. How did you get on it being them being your favorite? It's because of the bad boy image or what I, I the Raiders I can see because that's the first football team you played for. But the you, where that come from? And by the way, hey, mm -hmm. I let the state champions. What's happening with it, baby? We state champs 2022. No, don't don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, I told you we was back. Just because you put your arm like this, I'm in your back. Hey, All right, back, that's what I'm Hey, we yeah, beat y'all, yeah, man. I mean, we're down right now. We're building right now. So you can't, so you, you can't. We, look at us. Bro, you talking about down. We would have fit him in down. Are you serious? We're down right now. So you can't uh, hold that against uh, us. So I sound you like you can't Y'all, y'all won two years in a row. Y'all think y'all won the Super Bowl or something? Y'all think y'all national champions? Well, on, first of all, it's we beat LSU at the top of the year. That was a Super oh, Bowl. So we won't supposed I to mean, beat LSU. The first of the year, that's a new, it's a building year for them. Come oh, on now, oh if y'all would have, if y'all play LSU, if y'all play LSU right now, or when they beat Alabama, y'all would have lost. Because it don't matter. 
We beat Big LSU L. in the Super Dome. That's basically their house. That don't mean nothing. They still they ain't know that what they had new coach, new quarterback. Uh, well, uh, Come on now. Come the same. You can facts. Facts, facts, are the facts. Are the facts are the facts. Are the facts are the facts. We state champions. We brought the state champions right now. Yeah, I mean, college, I mean, college football. For for right now. Oh, bro, you know, man, the youth's coming back. The youth's coming back. You know, the youth's coming back. All that aside, you just, just <laughs> bow out to the champ. How did you end up, like, I know the Raiders, I'm thinking, I'm guessing the Raiders, because that's the first team you recognize playing with. Is that how you became a Raider fan? Nah, my first, like you said, starter jacket was a Raiders jacket. Oh, yeah. So, my sister had a 49ers jacket. Come on, dad was a 49ers fan, but I don't know why he didn't get me a 49ers jacket. He got me a Raiders jacket. So, off that's top, I was a Raiders fan. Y'all know. So off top, I'm a Raiders fan. So I just like, you know, for years I was like, yeah, I ain't no Raiders fan. But like, I was like, I can't deny that. It's my team. I'm a Raiders fan. So Miami, Miami, I would just, every time I watch TV for some reason, they were always on TV. You know, at the time, I don't know football, but they always on TV. And I was like, that that, uh, that dynasty. That's when they mm-hmm. was the U, like they had Ken Dorsey, Jerry Shockey, mm-hmm. Clinton Portis. Yeah, uh, yeah. McGahee. You know, uh, Frank Gore, Andre Johnson, uh, Roll, Devin Esther, all don't be, yeah, like they whole squad went first round basically. So it was like at that time I was like, okay, these boys going crazy. These boys going crazy. And in high school, you know, Devin Hester was going crazy. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna roll with them. You know what I'm saying? It was either that or USC. You know, Rachel Bush was going crazy. But I was like, nah. I like the colors. That orange is one of my favorite colors. Like, okay, I'm gonna go with that orange. And they just had that rainbow shield, that ugly rainbow shield back in the day. You can't tell me nothing with them. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna roll with them. So that's how I became fans for those two teams. Yeah, you're real. actually the only person that's a Raider fan that don't give me heat for having a Raider jacket and a Raider hat. They're like, how you a, a Bronco fan? But you got, I said, because NWA was one of my favorite groups and Ice Cube was one of my favorite rappers and they made it iconic. Like, right, and that's and I, I knew that information about you, so you know, well, you what I'm saying? That, like, you know. yeah, but like, even if I know deep down, deep down, you want to be one of us, you know what oh. I'm saying? I oh, know, I know oh, deep down, no, 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 no. First of all, I give deep it to you, I got a bad ass for him. I ain't gonna never deny not that. I know we rivals, but that's only because we in the we in the AFC West, that's it, like. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna deny y'all got y'all this is badass. They it, them colors like black and silver. They look good again. Right. And then y'all got your own fucking song, the Autumn yeah. Winter Rate, which wasn't even supposed to be y'all song. I mean, that was supposed to be NFL film. Right y'all took it, and then I mean, that's I mean, like just, I, hate like, right I, mean, right I hate y'all, but let's be honest, y'all got that so many quotables like our R. P. The late Al Davis, the Just Win Baby, like yeah, I mean. You can't go wrong with that silver and black. You can't go wrong. But yeah, well, yes, we you can't. Derek Carr, you can. Hey, we're not talking about Derek Carr right now. I mean, who y'all got right now? What are you, what are you doing right now? Man. Hey, hey, look at our okay. defense is tough. Our defense is tough. First of all, <laughs> yeah, I'm a future, I'm for, a future yeah. fan. I, I love future. Let's put it that okay. way. I ain't want him to come future. down. I love future. Okay. Future ain't playing quarterback right now, though. No, he ain't playing, playing quarterback. That's what he's doing. He's playing, yo. <laughs> That's what he's doing. He's he 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 ain't playing quarterback right now, so hey. But you need, hey, right. you probably can do a hell of a lot better than this, this fucker. Because, bruh, um, man, I don't know. But now, moving on, so, like, how did you end up? I mentioned uh, you having uh, won the final, uh, being the finalist for the, the redesign of Mississippi State. Like, how did that come about? How did you even, like, hear about that? You just, like, it was online or just how did that come about? It's really, I really wasn't a finalist. What it was is I got major exposure from applying for this mural type of a job in Jackson, which I didn't get. But the, it was a lady that reached out to that mural company and she worked for CNN. So when everybody saw my flag, that was CNN posted. So everybody thought automatically everybody that was on the CNN list was finalist. But I thank CNN for that, you know what I'm saying? Because it got my flag exposure and the other artists that were underneath. And what it was, what it was really was CNN wanted to see the new vision of a new flag from the black eye. 
or the you know the black artists. So they reached out to me and several other artists, and I think some uh, non uh, artists that are not you know of color. And my flag, I felt like Mississippi is one of the states that is not really prideful about their flag. You know what I'm saying? Like I have a cousin that lives in Ohio, and I went I went to visit him one time. Like I see people actually got their flag tattooed on them. People in California got their flag tattooed on them. You know what I'm saying? Like what's more prideful if you getting actual ink to your skin of your flag, you know what I'm saying? Just besides the American flag. So yeah, I was like, man, five you know what I'm saying? If you're from Mississippi, you probably don't get the Mississippi, you know, font tatted on you or whatever area code or the state, you know, shit yeah, or I, shape. I got, a, I, got a tat, I got a big crit of uh, acronym for Mississippi tatted on my phone. So, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, I want to, my vision was I want to give a flag to where not just black or white or Hispanic or whatever, whoever you are in Mississippi, if you're prideful about being from Mississippi, you can get it tatted on you, no shame. So that's that's my whole, so my flag was like, it was cut different. It wasn't a rectangle. Ohio is the only flag that's not shaped like a rectangle. It's shaped like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, like that. A pen. I want our, yeah, our flag, I had it shaped like an M. So like any way you turn it, it's an M this way, like this, like you're gonna miss it like that. Or if you turn this way, it's a regular flag. So I was like, it's tight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The only reason my flag didn't get um, accepted into the competition because I ain't put it in God We Trust. I don't, does the new one have that on there? Cause I don't even, the yeah. new one, I that was a That was a requirement for the contest to have in God We Trust. Yeah. And when I made the flag, it, I wasn't making it for the contest originally. But I still submitted my flag. But I had an idea if they would if they would have pushed mine through. I had an idea how we could put in God we trust on it. But you know, you they'll never know now. You should have went Moss point on them and just had an M M down and a W up. You know, M M yeah. Moss or a W for West Side. Cause that's where we from. All right, all right. All right. You already know. Yeah, that is. I said go mall point on. For those y'all don't know, our town is an adjective. Like when we say, "Hey, you go anywhere on the coast, say I'm about to go mall point on your ass." People back up. Yeah. Be like, right. hey, boy, go mall point on you. I know we was so sick. You know how prim and proper and educated my sister is, right? So I mean, we was having a talk one time. She was talking about a dude came in the wrong in DC. She said, "I'm finna go mall point on him." I'm like, "Oh no, this is real. like you know, hey, this girl's right. like, I'm finna really go mall point on it." So, All right. That yeah. that's a real thing, like man. I'm from Austin. Like, I mean, where from? Don't worry about you. Find out. All well, right. When I deployed to Africa in 2019, it was a, a E7 from New Orleans. I had because mm -hmm. I got a basketball jersey. I don't know if you've seen the picture. I got a basketball jersey. I got made in remembrance of my brother who's played there mm -hmm. in like the early 90s. Mm -hmm. So the dude from New Orleans said, "Hey, come here, man." I'm like, I thought I got in trouble because we was at the pool. You know, we were drinking at the pool. He said, "You from Austin?" Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Yeah." I see. So I got family down there from New Orleans. I got family whoop the whoop the whoop. And then it was a mm -hmm. officer in the Air Force. She was from Biloxi. She said, "Oh, you from Miles Point? Yeah, I gotta watch you. You know, yeah, I, I gotta watch my person. You know, my mama told me I couldn't party over there. But she from East Biloxi. Now, how many times yeah. we? How many times we told to be careful going over to East Biloxi? All right, Biloxi, Gulfport area. Like East Biloxi, all North right. Gulfport. Like we was always all like, right. East Biloxi, they all North Gulfport. Right. Some of Miles Point terrible. Those yeah, places boy. are terrible. Man, Harrison County ain't no joke. I'd rather get locked up in Jackson County if I get locked up in Harrison County any day. All right. All right. You already know. You yeah. already know. So. Heck yeah. Yeah, so I want to say this. So, like, when it's all said and done, you transcended from this place into, I don't know if you believe in God in heaven, or into the next, into the great beyond. What is the one thing you want to be remembered about your art? What is the message you want to have or like the legacy you want to leave behind? Hmm. That's a great question. I always think about this. I want people to be able to be to know me through my art for passion. You know, I want them to look at my art and want to start change you know what i'm saying because like in the art scene the art world you don't necessarily see 
cartoons as art. You know, even though art is the eye of a beholder, you know what I'm saying, you don't necessarily see cartoons as that. I want them to see like when once I'm up there, I'm like, oh, he made off art. You know, he made off cart doing cartoons. Why I can't do that? You know what I'm saying? It's like when Basquiat was doing, destroying his pictures or he was just doing these scribbles. They didn't think that was art at first. And then now he, he's passed away. His art selling for 1.5 billion. You know what I'm saying? So why can't cartoon art that has adult messages transcend that whole, that whole space? I feel it. That's so what my, I want. my man say when he died, he like Marlo on the wire, the price of the brick going up. All right. <laughs> All right, what man, I, say yesterday price is not today's price. Yeah. All right, man. We're about to wrap this up. Before we wrap this up, I got this game I play with everybody's called this or that. So I, mm -hmm. I you do three questions. I ask you either between the there's two choices you gotta have. So you gotta tell me between them two choices which one you you prefer. So first we're gonna start off. Um will you be an artist? Uh painting or drawing. Drawing that. Yeah, that's okay. wrong. Yeah. That's what you, that you, that, that you made the bones. It's ideal to see that. Yeah. All right. So next we're going to move on. We didn't riff and rant about that. You know, your team, y'all, yeah, y'all did. Your NFL team <laughs> did it. My college team is the the, the, the state champ. So, and, and, and which one? The Raiders or the U? If you had to choose one. I'll say the U. Even though we, we've been down a couple of years, it is. The spirit is still alive. They want to see, they want the U back. The world wants the U back. All right. I'll say the U. Well, the last one, it's still going to be on football. So I'm going to ask you, I know it's going to throw you for, well, it might throw you for a loop or not, because you played for two legendary coaches before you hit college. Mm -hmm. Coach Gian Barrett of the West Raiders, or Coach mm -hmm. Jerry Alexander of the Moss Point Tigers. Mm. That's a tough one, bro. No, because I'm too late there, coaches. Yeah, that's a tough one. I'll say Coach Ben, because he uh he put he still that uh toughness in me. So when I got to high school, I wasn't crying no more. Yeah, hey, we, hey, he had to let you know we on the west side. We west side boys, baby. We on all right. We, we ain't all thugs, but hey, if you come out the west side, you gotta you gotta you gotta be with it. Yes, sir. You right about that. You gotta be with he it. Made us tough. Yeah. Welcome. Fuck the mud, we got it out the clay. And you're the right. clay under the mud, so we know we we come from the bottom. We got, we got the sand in that grass. <laughs> yeah, the sand in the grass. And then once we got out of there, we had to fight them damn horse flies and them gnats. Oh, man, all right. Them gnats, horse flies, that's killer combination right there, boy. Yeah. All right, man, before yes, you get sir. about it, man, you got to get all these people your social media information and everything so they can, you know, keep up with you and shop with you. I'm trying to put some bread in your pocket, bro. All right. My my name again is Quinn Mob. That is Q I N M O B. So social media handles is always Q I N underscore M O B on all social media platforms. And my clothing line is Cupid Arrows. Q P I D E R O S. You can find me. Shop me there. CupidArrows.com. Let's go. All right. All right. All right, Q, my appreciate you checking in with your boy, man. No problem, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Yes, all sir. Right. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. All right. No doubt. No doubt. Peace. Yep.